It's Eye to Eye with Connie Chung, with correspondents Bernard Goldberg, Edie Magnus, Russ Mitchell, Roberta Baskin, and Bill Lagatuta. Good evening. What did Tanya Harding know, and when did she know it? Harding herself answered at least one of those questions today. Harding still denies that she was in on the plot to attack rival Nancy Kerrigan. But for the first time, she admitted she did learn details about the assault after the fact and withheld them from authorities. The U.S. Olympic Committee says it is deeply concerned about her statement, and the U.S. Figure Skating Association has appointed a panel to investigate. Harding's former husband spent another day talking to investigators in Portland. Jeff Galuli reportedly is trying to cut a deal in exchange for implicating Harding. He and three others are charged with conspiring to attack Kerrigan. One family member who is sticking by Tanya Harding tonight is someone from her troubled past, her mother, Lavona Golden. Tonight, you'll hear what she has to say as her daughter confronts the scandal head on. I would like to begin by saying how sorry I am about what happened to Nancy Kerrigan. I am embarrassed and ashamed to think that anyone close to me could be involved. I had no prior knowledge of the planned assault on Nancy Kerrigan. I am responsible, however, for failing to report things I learned about the assault when I returned home from nationals. Many of you will be unable to forgive me for that. It will be difficult to forgive myself. It's been hard to know what to think or feel about Tanya Harding over these past few weeks. But there is one person who has never doubted her innocence, her mother, Lavona Golden. This week, she watched her daughter fall oh, God. and watched her daughter soar. Yes. <laughs> and we went along, too. It's the first time Lavona Golden, whose friends call her Sandy, has allowed anyone this close since the assault on Nancy Kerrigan last month. You've got to try and get some rest, honey. You've got to try and eat. Of course, it's kind of nice. I look good. <laughs> yeah, you do. You're looking real good. Just don't lose your energy. Have you sat down and actually asked Tanya if she was in any way connected with the attack, if she knew anything about it? I don't have to ask Tanya. I know she wasn't. She would never do that, not to a competitor. She wouldn't even hurt a fly if she could help it. She's not... She, she never was vicious. But Tanya Harding admits the same can't be said for others in her camp. When I returned home Monday, January 10th, 1994, I was exhausted, but still focused on the national championships. Within the next few days, I learned that some persons that were close to me may have been involved in the assault. My first reaction was one of disbelief. And the disbelief was followed by shock and fear. I have since reported this information to the authorities. Although my lawyers tell me that my failure to immediately report this information is not a crime. Do you believe that there is actually a possibility that she might not be able to go to the Olympics? Truthfully, yes. I think they will try and stop her. Why do you think that? Well, she's never been terribly popular. She's not exactly your little princess, or big princess, or any kind of princess. <laughs> she's just a normal, typical, everyday girl that has a mind of her own and says so. And that, says Tanya's mother, is her daughter's biggest problem what people think of her. They believe that she's hard and cold and nasty and bitter, and she isn't. She isn't any of those things. But if Tanya's image is hard-edged, what about her mother? 
And who is the real mother of Tanya Harding? Is it the woman who showed us treasured pictures of a daughter who began skating at age three? A loving parent to whom Tanya skates at the end of a grueling practice with hundreds watching. Good job, Hi, Tanya. I'm proud of you, Samara. We're all proud of you. I'm so tired. <laughs> I know. But you'd be glad when this is all over. Yes, you bet. Well, we Let me will. tell you. Or is she the woman who was so determined to see Tanya succeed as a skater that she lost control as a parent and became abusive? There are people who believe that you have been abusive to Tanya. Well, if I was, I must not have been there. <laughs> must have been someplace else because I don't remember it. Not abusive, ever. Corrective, maybe. Not abusive, not physically abusive. You know, my personal feelings is the child never stood a chance. Absolutely never stood a chance. But Pat Hamill thinks she knows the real Sandy Golden. Pat's daughter, Janine, took skating lessons with Tanya Harding when they were both young girls. I've seen her slapped. I saw her uh, at one time, one occasion, she was sitting on a chair and her mother, uh, she was brought off the ice because she was doing something wrong on the ice. Her mother brought her in, sat her down in the chair, and they were having a conversation and slapped Tanya and knocked Tanya off the chair. People have said that basically you were the mother from hell. I wouldn't call myself an abusive mother, nor would I say she had a bad childhood. And then some people, they don't f figure that it's right to swat a bottom. I think if a bottom's needed to be swatted, fine. So you did spank her? Swat is not spank. Spank is putting over your knees and going whop, 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 or whatever. I did not ever do that. Mind being the underdog and what about this? Did you I see the student film about Tanya Harding on 60 Minutes? Tanya. There was Tanya, age 15, talking to her mother on the telephone after finishing sixth in a national skating competition in New York. Well, tell Dad that it might be televised. I don't know. Yes, it does. It, I got half credit for it, Mom. Yep. Okay, let me do. Bye. What a bitch. She goes, you did terrible, you know that. I said, you sucked. And I said, Mom, I got half credit for it. She goes, so the rest of the program sucked also. And I said, Mom, no, it didn't. You can ask anybody, that's not my language, ever. She was probably angry with herself because she hadn't won and used me again as an outlet. <laughs> There is no question Tanya Harding and her mother have led hard scrabble lives. I worked seven days a week. Did you? This is the Portland neighborhood where Tanya Harding grew up. Her mother was on her fourth husband and working as a waitress. And there was no money. Absolutely no money. There have been so many lies out there in the public. Her bad childhood was terrible. She had everything we could get for her. Maybe it did come from the Goodwill Salvation Army, St. Vincent de Paul's, but she had it. And it came from there and it was still new. What do you think of Jeff Galuli, who was your son-in-law? No comment. Your daughter filed police reports. Yes, I know. And said uh, that her husband uh, was abusive, that uh, he assaulted me, she said, physically with his open hand and fist. Uh, he's not in the right frame of mind, she says, and he follows me, and he's broken into my house and into my truck. I'm afraid for my safety. True. She told you that as well? Yes. I warned her before she married him. And then I didn't say anything else. I backed out of the picture. What caused Tanya to keep going back to him? Same thing that kept causing me to go back to my first husband. I guess. Love. Not knowing any better. I did the same thing. 
Say what you will about Tanya Harding's personal life, but as she took to the ice today, there was no question she's made it to the top, that she's one of the finest figure skaters in the world. I know I have let you down, but I have also let myself down. But I still want to represent my country in Lillehammer, Norway, next month. Despite my mistakes and my rough edges, I have nothing, I have done nothing to violate the standards and excellence of, sport, of sportsmanship that are expected in an Olympic athlete. But now Sandy Golden believes all that work, all that sacrifice may have been for nothing. What do you think the Olympic gold would mean to Tanya? At this point, it wouldn't mean anything because of the fact she'll never have sponsors. She can't do commercials and things for them, I don't imagine, the way the media has destroyed her. Inside, it would complete something that she started. It is something that she wants more than anything else in the world, is to try to get that gold. But a getting it, really, I honestly don't believe will do her any good. That's very sad. I know it. To say that just takes my heart out and rips it to pieces. I have devoted my entire life to one objective, winning an Olympic gold medal for my country. This is my last chance. I ask only for your understanding and the opportunity to re represent my country with the best for figure skating performance of my life. For Tanya Harding, this has been a week filled with accusations and incredible pressure. But she did have a bit of fun turning the tables on hundreds of reporters waiting for the other skate to drop. And whatever happens to Tanya Harding, her mother says she'll be there, putting the past behind them, hoping to save the future. Will Tanya Harding be able to compete in the Olympics? The U.S. Figure Skating Association says her name will be on the official list to be submitted to Olympic officials by Monday. But Harding could be yanked from the team as late as February 21st, just before her competition. As for Nancy Kerrigan, she took time out from practice on Cape Cod today to listen to Tanya Harding's statement, but had no comment. Her coach says she is in such great shape she performed all her programs flawlessly this week. Last weekend, she traded in her ice skates for sneakers to shoot a Reebok commercial in Los Angeles. Her agent says Kerrigan has had 35 offers from movie producers to do her story, and there are already at least four books being rushed into print. Next, an eye-to-eye -eye investigation. Girl Scout cookies make big bucks, so why do the girls have to settle for small change? We'll tell you what happened when this troop leader dared to complain.